Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we are going to be answering a subscriber's question. Um, Vito asks, what subfield of quantitative finance is econometrics most used or most useful? So this is a pretty good question. Um, if you have a economics background, an econometrics background, right, you've taken statistics, or at least I hope you've taken statistics if you've really studied this stuff. Um, but again, what is it really used for in quantitative finance? This question is basically everything. <laughs> So quantitative finance as a whole really utilizes math, statistics, and computer science. Um, again, putting all of it together can be challenging. And as we've seen in other videos and talked about, you know, full stack quants, for example, um, typically model development and model validation focus heavily around statistics applied to financial data. Uh, this by definition is just econometrics. So credit risk, market risk, operational risk, and PPNR are the four big areas for the most part uh, in risk management, which we call it. Again, this applies to the trading side. So for those of you thinking, you know, I don't want to end up in risk. I want to be a trader. I want to work in investments. Okay, market risk is your entire division of the market. So that includes traders, investment firms, all that. Again, all of you have operational risk as well, and you're going to have credit risk as well and you're gonna have PPNR risk, though most people don't model that except for banks. But in general here, um, econometrics is used almost everywhere. So let me give you a few examples here. We'll talk through them a little bit. In your econometrics courses, I am guessing you've covered regression. So regression can be anything from you know OLS to general least squares or fe feasible general least squares or ARIMAs, RMAX, GARCH, SEM, so simultaneous equation models. Uh, SURs, seemingly unrelated regressions. You've probably covered Markov chains, for example. Um, all of this is viewed as econometrics. This is all just viewed as quantitative finance as well. Um, examples of where we actually use these. So for banks that do um, CCAR modeling or CSOL modeling. So CCAR is Comprehensive Capital Assessment Review, I believe. <laughs> um, that's CCAR, that's US regulations, just for banks in general, to make sure they have enough capital in hand in case a crisis occurs. Um, CECL is current expected credit loss. This is how you measure credit loss for banks. So to get into some of the details here, um, for credit loss, for example, we have to predict uh, what's called expected credit loss, which is part of this definition of CECL. Um, but Expected losses are going to be equal to probability of default, which is PD, times LGD, which is loss given default, times EAD, which is exposure at default. So this is a simple equation here. Um, the banks actually model each individual piece, or you make an assumption about one piece and model the other pieces. Um, probability of default, for example, in credit modeling is typically done using logistic regression. Um, data science is coming in a little bit, so gradient boosting models has seen a lot of success in modeling credit. That's the credit side. Um, if you wanted to go into like the derivative pricing side, for example, right, everybody talks about the amount of math that you need to do financial engineering, to understand the Black-Scholes, to do all that. Stochastic calculus is a big part of that and risk neutral pricing. Uh, but what a lot of people don't talk about for some reason, I don't know if, I don't know, academic institutions aren't teaching it, but in practice, one of the biggest issues is A, the model's not very robust and complete, so you need additional layers of mathematics. So again, this wouldn't necessarily be econometrics, but you need math for that. Um, and then that being said, you need to model out volatility. So the volatility in the Black-Scholes is typically like they teach you in school, you can use implied volatility. So given the pricing of the market, um, you can essentially back out the volatility. Um, but there are entire groups and divisions and people that actually model volatility and that gets put into the Black-Scholes pricing. So methods for doing that, for example, would be GARGE, um, I know there's something else called the rough volatility model, which is done by Jim Gatherall. I went and heard a whole presentation on it. Uh, but again, you need to figure out how do you model volatility, which would go into these derivative pricing. Again, GARCH, for example, would be something that would be on the econometric side. Um, the rough volatility model falls more into stochastic calculus and stochastic modeling and processes. Again, stochastics, which is essentially just time series, um, that would somewhat fall into econometrics as well. So that's also common. But just to wrap this video up, um, if you have an econometrics background and you're wanting to work in quantitative finance, one of the biggest tips I can give you is when you write the resume and you have the education section, which might say like university of you know, school XYZ, um, and have like your GPA or location or whatnot, underneath of that, put in there like relevant topics or relevant courses underneath the school, and then list out the skills that you have learned in your program of econometrics that would apply 
um, to the job you're applying for. So for example, credit risk focuses a lot on uh, logistic modeling, traditional statistics in my mind, so OLS, even some data science, gradient boosting, neural networks, some things like that. But again, look at the job description and then say, oh, they're wanting you know logistic regression, they want OLS, things like that, and then make sure those are in your relevant topics. If you're applying to something that's market risk related and you've covered um, something like a Markov chain or Markov models in general, and you'd see those in the job description and then you'd list those uh, into that relevant section. So you can show to them, yes, I might have an econometrics PhD or master's, but again, I have the relevant skills. Um, the reason I tell you to list it in there is because HR doesn't necessarily know what econometrics is, especially if it's not listed on the job posting because that's what they're looking at. So if you can make that connection easier, you can enhance your chance of getting an HR interview. And then of course, when you go to interview with the hiring manager, they'll know what econometrics is. They can ask you a bunch of questions about the modeling, your education and background, uh, and see if you'd be a good fit for that role. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <laughs>